This is what a bracket fungus looks like uh, before it's been carved into a stove. You can see the wood and the bark still attached there, uh, right there. It just hooks onto the tree just like that. This is the top side, and this is the bottom. The the pores that are on the bottom here act, uh, act like a sponge, and they make a really good oil wick. And I can actually carve this into a bowl and make a little stove out of it. And if I'm really, really careful, I can leave a wick in place without uh, breaking it out. And they make really nice stoves. And I'm going to try to make one right now. What I do is I take a cane, a piece of cane, like this here, and you got to kind of get a short edge, break a piece off, and you just got to kind of dig down in there if you can. Some of these can be really hard. And once you get the first little piece out, and once you get the first little piece out, uh, the rest of it just comes right out. Okay, as you can see, I've got one trough dug there, and I'm starting to dig another trough here. And once I get this trough dug, I'll cut this back thinner, and I'll just leave a thin wick right there, and then I'll fill this bowl with oil and I'll make sure it's completely saturated and I'll make sure that it has oil laying in it and then I'll light it so let me go ahead and finish right, just keep scraping out a little bit alright so there's there's a stove ready to uh, fill with oil so uh, set it down on a level spot and we'll put our oil in. What I do is I use a Boda bag. Yeah, it's a little yeah, you've seen these. Boda bag. What I do yeah, it's just like a sponge, it soaks the oil right up. And you just wanna saturate the whole entire thing. You just want to pour the oil on there until it's completely and totally saturated and then um, you let it set for about 10 minutes to make sure that it soaks in everywhere as much as it can and then we're going to light it. Alright, that candle's still burning real good. I have to maintain the oil level. Every time it drops to a certain point I add a little bit more. And I can do the same thing with my stove. I can add oil to it as it starts to burn dry in this reservoir right here I can add more oil to it and keep it burning for a very long time or I can just let it burn up whichever I wish but as you can see that's enough just enough uh, heat to start cooking on and it'll gradually get larger the whole thing of the just this whole entire fungus will catch on fire because it's saturated with oil This is one of the tools that I like to use and it's a tool so important that the Inuit Kudlik was fashioned after it and this was the original tool and of course the stone working peoples of the frozen north uh, figure out, figured out how to make uh, these in stone so we started making stone Kudliks. But nothing replaces the lure of a good bracket fungus stove. A stove this size, this one right here, see it's only about uh, the width of my hand. It'll burn for, uh, just on one fill of oil, it'll burn for about an hour or an hour and a half. If I maintain the oil level in it, I can keep them burning all night. That's how to build a stove out of a bracket fungus and a little bit of oil. 
thing about an oil fire like this is it provides a good solid heavy satisfying heat uh, as, as you can see it doesn't produce any smoke I'm not going to burn my eyes with it it's not going to make my clothes smell like ashes wood fires are wonderful for outdoors but for inside of a shelter or something like that especially when it's cold a good satisfying oil heat fire like this is hard to replace with anything and I don't have the monotony of the wood all I have to carry is a bracket fungus and a little bit of oil a lot better than breaking sticks